students, I greet you from wherever you are. My name is Madam Phoebe Karioki, a lecturer in M Mount Kenya University in the School of Hospitality, Travel and Tourism. Uh, today I will take you through airfares and ticketing. That's the unit. And it's a unit called BHT 2109. And the specific topic of today will be just an introduction of airfares and ticketing, just to have a background understanding of what exactly is airfares and ticketing and what it entails. So welcome to today's lesson, and I hope that we are going to learn together. Uh, so just as I said, today's topic is on the introduction to airfares and ticketing. And as we all know, we all want maybe to travel to a certain maybe destination within a country or maybe outside a country. And bef uh, before then, you should be aware of some issues that you are supposed to know as a traveler or as a passenger. If you are traveling by air, then you must know what is supposed or you are, what you are supposed to know at the beginning before you start or embark on that journey. So during air travel, there are several requirements that a traveler or a passenger should be aware of. And these requirements relate to issues of departure, issues of the transit areas, and the issues of the arrival and the related weight requirement. If you get to know about all these kinds of requirements before you embark on your journey or before you start a journey, be it a domestic flight, be it an international flight, then you should be aware of this because they are going to help you a lot because at the end of it, we find that they normally change a person's airfare. These requirements may affect the fine of airfare that the customer is required to pay for and that's why it's important at the beginning, first of all, to know of these specific requirements. We have the departing formality. That's also a re uh, that's the very first requirement that as a passenger or as a, as a traveler, you should be aware of. So at the departing formality, it's a requirement that you should know that normally at the departing formality, there's that issue of the very first thing, knowing about what you are required to have at the departing formality as a requirement. So transfer, there's normally the transfer of baggage from background transportation to check-in desks via the security check, normally at the terminal A. And also still at that uh, departing formality, you're also supposed to hand in those important requirements, travel documents that you're supposed to have. Like for example, a ticket and a passport with a visa. So your passport must be there, you must hand it over, and also it has to have what you call a visa because a, vi a passport is just a document that, has, that is showing the authorization of an individual from the uh, uh, issuing authority to travel. And a visa is just an endorsement onto a passport. So once you hand in those kinds of documents, then you'll be allowed to go to the other kind of uh, a protocol or maybe procedure for you to continue with your travel or maybe procedures for you to go to the next level for you to travel. We have the transit area formality. Transit area formality normally are uh, normally those areas whereby you don't say you've arrived yet to your final destination. So at the transit area formality, it's on normally where passengers are normally arriving in another airport but have not yet reached to their final destination and must transfer to a connecting flight. These passengers normally wait in a specially designated area of the airport that is called the transit area or a transit lodge. However, when a connecting flight does not depart for several hours, then the passenger may be lodged at an airport hotel, courtesy of that specific airline he or she had traveled with. Passenger in a transit area still do not generally go through 
customs and immigration formalities. And baggage is normally sent through to the final destination. So learner, you should understand that normally at those specific, that specific uh, requirement of transit area, you should understand what are the necess necessities for you to be in that area as you're continuing with your journey. And so to go on, because we've seen that in those specific, in that area, which is the transit area, normally you've not yet reached yet your final destination where you have to go to. And maybe you'll be connected either to another flight or maybe you sleep, have a sleep over there and then the next day you continue with your journey. But still remember, it's a transit area. You've not yet reached your final destination. I'll now take you to the several types of connections that normally exist. And normally we have connections that uh, exist whenever maybe you are in a transit area or maybe in a transfer area. And these are one, international connection. An international connection is where we have uh, that connection which is normally between two international flights. And in the international to domestic connection, this is normally a connection between an arriving international flight and a departing domestic flight. So this is a connection that is involving two kinds of flights, an arriving international and a departing domestic uh, flight. Then you go to the domestic to international connection. This is normally a connection between an arriving domestic flight and a departing international flight. So if you understand of these specific issues that normally encompass on the issues of connections and transfers, then you'll be well placed whenever you're in those areas and you will not be very much confused, not knowing which maybe flight you're to connect with. If you're to connect to a domestic, uh, international to domestic, then you must know which is that uh, an arriving international flight and which is that domestic departing flight that is actually to to maybe you be involved with so it's good that if you understand these kinds of international and the domestic connections and you know which is arriving and which is departing then you'll be well placed and not confused while at those international airports then we have domestic to international connection this is normally an, uh, an, a connection between dom an arriving domestic flight and a departing and a departing international flight. Then the last one we have the domestic connection, which is a simple one, which we say it's normally uh, a connection between two flights in the same or within the same country. Then we go to the other uh, formality, which is a requirement. Uh, as I said, it's normally. Uh, arrival formality and in the arrival formality now it's whereby you'll be required as a passenger to know once you're in your final destination you've arrived at your final destination then what is it that you're required to do once passengers arrive at their final destination they go through the following and one of it is that you go to the very first office or maybe the very first uh, place where by the, you're going to be checked whether you've, you met the criteria and you you are you are supposed maybe or given the authority to be in that specific destination you've arrived into so you go to the immigration and the passport control immigration and the passport control that is under the f arrival formality as a requirement immigration and passport control this is whereby all arriving passengers are checked all pa arriving passengers are checked to determine whether they were whether they were authorized to enter this, the to enter the uh, the country they are in or they have arrived, passengers are also subject still once they have arrived to health inspection, and that's why it's very important to know which country are you going to, so that you know what they require, whether it's a as a health certificate, and so that once you are there, you will be able to hand over or maybe to surrender there the said certificate, the health certificate. So at that place still at the migrations, once you're in the final destination, you'll be checked. You'll be checked with all these kinds of documents, whether you have them and if you are qualified to be in that specific country. Uh, we have baggage claim. Baggage claim also is still under the arrival formality. All checked baggages are delivered to the baggage claim area of the airport 
where pa passengers normally reclaim passengers normally reclaim their own baggages they normally claim their own baggages uh, the international baggage claim normally are located after the immigration passport and, and passport control but prior to customs uh, control many baggage claim areas uh, also provide currency exchange so whenever you are maybe reclaiming your baggages still at the same section where you are reclaiming your baggages you can still have to have those facilities uh, where you can exchange your currency to the current currency of the destination you've arrived into. We have customs. Customs, after reclaiming your baggage, the passengers will be required to clear with the customs, which is very important. Now you're in that country, you've reclaimed your, you've showed your, all your documents in the immigration and the passport control, you are clean. Then you've gone, reclaimed your, your baggages, you're clean there. Uh, we've also maybe exchanged to certain issues that you wanted, maybe facilitated to you, like the currency. You have them, you're clean. Then you go to the customs, where it's a must that everyone has to go through that channel. After reclaiming their baggage, passengers will, will be required to clear with the customs. Duty and tax-free allowances are often indicated in those customs hall. Passengers may be offered three choices at the customs. And these choices are normally defined as follow. One is red. And when you, have, you go to that red channel, it's normally written something to declare. Whenever you go, you go to that customs, there's a ch channel which specifically indicates whether you had something maybe you have to declare or maybe you have to pay for before you go to the other channel or go to the other step uh, at the airport. So red, something to declare. If passengers have goods or currencies, to declare where a duty or tax is also voluntarily paid for the importer, imported goods, uh, e.g. goods purchased in another country, and they've exceeded the personal, uh, personal tax allowance, then you'll be, uh, you'll, be, uh, you'll, be, so you'll be allowed at that channel to pay for them. So because you, are, you have something you have to, you have to declare. So at the red channel, it's when you have something to declare. Then you go to the green channel. Green channel is when you go to that channel where there's nothing you are to declare. For passengers who bring personal effects and goods that are not intended for commercial purposes and which do not exceed, which still do not exceed the duty-free allowance, this includes personal goods that are normally under the team, eh? under the team, that is the travel information manual, then it will mean then that there's nothing you have to declare there, so you, there will be no even need of you going to the same channel. But you can go there and still say you have nothing to declare because your goods have not exceeded the duty-free allowance and the like. But if they've exceeded, you still have to go still to the red channel, have to pay for it, and then you're declared clean. Then still another, another, another choice is on the weight system, whereby we all know that as a passenger you travel with goods, all your baggages, and every baggage normally if you exceed the, the related weight or the uh, required weight, then it will mean the extra weights of your baggages, you have to pay for them, because each and every weight, there is normally also another extra weight, which is normally a weight allowance which is given, but if you go extend, you extend on the weight bag, uh, baggage weight, then it will mean the extra weight you have to pay for them. The weight allowance depends upon the class of travel as follow. But remember, Alana, here, that this weight allowance, they normally vary with the airlines. Eh? They vary. To this year you go, you find that maybe the economy class was taking a weight allowance of 20 kg. But uh, you go to an, another year or mother, another month, it was maybe 30. So it varies. It is not as, it, it can, you cannot really say it's uh, static. It's somehow dynamic. It keeps changing, varies. So that's it. It keeps changing. And weight allowance depends upon the, travel, the class of the travel, which maybe we say if you are going with the class, uh, you are going, uh, you're traveling in an aircraft, maybe in, in cabin section or cabin or section economy, you, the weight, uh, the baggage weight can be 20. And business class, 30. First class, 30, uh, 40 and the like. But remember, as I said, they keep varying. 
Uh, now from there, uh, since you've known much of the formalities uh, or which are the requirements, it's also good to understand that still in the same issue of aircraft or maybe air transportation, air transportation, it's good that you also have an overview, an overview of an aircraft, which normally causes different kinds of fares to a passenger. Aircraft are split up into different cabin sections, uh, like first class, business class, premium, ec premium economy uh, class, and the economy class, uh, with different prices charged for the product and services delivered. For example, you imagine you're going maybe to a music concert and there are, there are different prices of the tickets on offer. You might just want to the cheapest, of course, uh, or might pay more to get a better view and more so better services. With this then, it, it, will, uh, it will be up to you as a passenger to choose. Do I want to go with the first class? Do I want to go to the business class? Or do I choose the premium economy or the economy? It's up to you depending on your pocket and how much you can pay. Now it will depend. Some, uh, the same principles apply to, for air travel. The passenger chooses where to sit depending on how much they want to pay and how, how, what services they want offered to them. So with all those considerations then, it will matter, or it will matter now of your choices, whether you want to a business, a first class, or economy, or a premier economy. With those now, those are now the issues about the, the fare types, depending on which type of the section cabin you have chosen to travel with. Features of each cabin section, first class. First class, as we all know, it's normally, uh, 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 first class seating is normally expected to be the most expensive uh, or most costly as the, uh, since it's known to be the most comfortable. They offer best services and most customers, especially those who can afford, normally opt for the first class because of the uh, good services and the comfortability of the section. Business class, this class is synonymous with the executive class and is very popular for, the, for those who simply do not wish to relinquish to the, uh, the creature of comforts, yet are not willing to pay top dollar prices either. So they opt to go to the second class because it's not as expensive as the first class. Also for those who choose this class of economy class, they normally consider the issue of the space. Space factor becomes the deciding factor, space factor. Then we go, to, we go to the premium economy. Premium economy is normally the, is a step above the economy class. It offers greater distance between the rows and the, uh, the rows of seats, uh, as well as the roomier, the roomier seats. And due to the tight quarters of the economy class, premium class now is uh, premium economy class uh, uh, section is now becoming increasingly uh, coveted, creating a huge growth component with virtually all the airlines. So people are now opting more be, uh, to the premium economy more than the economy class because of its comfortability nature and the space, space in it creates between the rows and the roomier seats. Uh, as we continue now, the last class, which is the economy class, which I said is the last class and the largest, of course, the largest section of the aircraft on scheduled flights. And normally the only service provider, for, 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 provided by the charter flights. Uh, it has adjustable seats, complementary meals, and, and it depends on the length of your flight, of the length of your flight. It has complementary drinks as well drinks which are normally chargeable by the airlines. Uh, Airfares and ticketing. Uh, Lana, just as I said, I was just taking you through the background, found, uh, the foundation, eh? but, uh, from, uh, just to have an, a little bit of some knowledge on how these issues of airfares and ticketing are arising. And it's good that the simplest maybe f kinds of information you get then you will not be stuck once you are to start, you may be agile to start traveling by air. And as we can now see, airfares and ticketing 
I'll take you through some specific issues about them or maybe a few definitions so that you understand. Now, after knowing all those requirements and the sections, maybe so that you don't get confused when you go into your tour to go board an aircraft, you don't know which, you don't know if you're told of a section or a cabin, you don't know where to start from. It's good that also, uh, since I've taken you through that, then at least you'll have the basis, you have the basic knowledge uh, uh, of how an aircraft looks like it has section or cabins. Uh, now, on the issues of airfares. Airfare is simply put as the price a passenger pays for in order to travel. Airfare is just uh, the price a passenger pays for in order to travel by air. And ticketing, ticketing is that process, that process of being offered with an online document, which is a receipt or a ticket, uh, by any airline or a travel agency to confirm that you as an individual have purchased a certain seat on a flight of an aircraft. So that's the ticketing issue. Then airfares are most often based on one way or a return travel trip. And they must be published, unpublished, or negotiated fares. So these are now the kinds of fares that are normally used mostly whenever you, are to, you embark on an air transportation. They, it can either be a published one, unpublished, or negotiated. But remember, the most commonly one, the most commonly used, is the published because that is the one anybody can afford to pay for. And published fares are also known as consolidated fares, and are offered by consolidators or the bucket shops. Published, I've said, are those fares that are available for purchase by anyone who wishes to travel by air. So I'll take you through those specific types of the published fares, published airfares. And the following are the types of the uh, published airfares, which are based on the round or a uh, round, you know, you know, we normally say round or a return trip because you either go and come back or go and it becomes like a one way, you don't come back. So that is a one way travel. You move from point A to point B, that's one way. But if you're moving from point A to point B and from point B back to point A, that's a, like a round trip or a return trip. So we tell, go to the types of the published fares. Apex, Apex are discounted international fares, which normally require tickets to be purchased in advance, such as you, you, are, you purchase it maybe in advance like seven days, 12, 14 days and 21 so it has some um, like you pay in advance like seven days in advance 14 days and 21 a uh, day minimum advance purchase and we'll uh, have other restrictions like for example non-refundable it's non-refundable and change of fee are just a few of the posts uh, of the possible restriction then we go to excursion excursion fares under the published airfares are lower priced fares that involve restrictions like advanced purchase. You have to ad do ad an advanced purchase. Time of year, which year are you to travel? That's, those are now the specific kinds of restrictions that are normally imposed upon the excursion type of affair. If you are maybe choosing to travel using the excursion fare, then you must know what is supposed to be or as a passenger you're supposed to know under the issues of the excursion fares that one for one you have to do an advanced purchase the second one which year of the trial you have to be very specific and then the minimum and the maximum stay in that destination you're traveling to then we have joint fares joint fares are offered by airlines that have sort of partnership relationship on the selected air routes so if you are to travel maybe to a certain destination, know what type of airfare to choose because maybe you may be restricted at some point if you had chosen a fare maybe which maybe could be of joint whereby they have their own regulations they are following since they are in a joint partnership. So with that, you must be very careful as you are choosing the type of the airfares maybe to purchase or buy before you travel. A through fare, through fare are those fares to a destination reached by traveling through a gateway city. 
a gateway city. For example, you want to travel, you're coming from Kenya, you want to go to, uh, you want to go to Zanzibar, uh, you want to go to Namibia. And maybe in that specific through, through fair as it is, it's supposed to be that you are to, tra to travel to another country whereby you're not supposed to show the kind of fair. Then as you are reaching to that fair, uh, that country, the specific fair will not be shown because it's a direct one. It will show that you're going through maybe Egypt as you're going through Namibia. So Egypt now becomes like a gateway city, which normally does not specify how much you had paid once you are in Egypt, but it will show a through fair up to Namibia. So that's just an example to show how a through fair is normally gotten. Are unrestricted, unrestricted, flexible, or full fair. These are fair titles given to the most expensive t tickets and are, uh, and are the fairs that allows one to get a refund or change of ticket when necessary. These fairs can also be purchased at any time, even the same day of travel. So you can see it is a bit better than the ones we've just read there before, uh, because this at least, it has no much of the restriction imposed on them. So uh, that's un unrestricted, flexible, the full fairs. We have bereavement fairs. These are fairs which are always the lowest fairs and can be the last minute fairs that can be booked until the, the, the departure time. So still this one looks more of this, but still we find that this is more, they are offered maybe to family members and those traveling to a funeral. So maybe the charges could also be different with this because of the specific services it is to be offering. So that's a bereavement fairs, which is very different also with the unrestricted. Unrestricted tends to be a bit better because it has so, it's so open that anyone can feel comfortable purchasing this kind of affair. Uh, we have anatomy of a journey. Next, we have anatomy of a journey. Remember, Lana, here I'm telling you that uh, in air affairs and ticketing introductory part, I just want you to understand the specific, the basics, eh? how to go about the issue of air transportation. Anatomy of a journey. Uh, and this anatomy of a journey, actually, it consists of the entire routine included on a ticket or a group of conjunction tickets, whereby in a ticket you'll be shown where you're going to, where you're coming from. The f you know, it shows all the details, which is the intermediate points, which are the via points, that is. And now, this now gives you an entire anatomy of that journey you're, 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 you're involving yourself into. So that's now the anatomy of a journey. It consists of the entire routine, whereby it will show you which are the via points, which is the intermediate points, which are the origin point and the final destination. Then it gives you a full, a full anatomy of that specific journey you're involving yourself into. A journey consists of the following ticketed point. And remember, as I'm giving you this, this is all about the anatomy of a journey, because in a journey, it has to involve ticketed points, air, transportation, there has to be ticketed points. And this is so now what I'll take you through so that you get to understand better. Origin. Origin is the very first ticketed point. We all understand that as you embark onto a journey, there is a point you have to move from initially as you move on with the entire journey. So origin, this is the initial point or the starting point and the first ticketed point in the, in the routine. It is also the fair construction point and is usually in the commencement, in the country of commencement of a, tra of a travel. It is normally in the country of the commencement of a travel. If you're moving from Kenya, you're going to London. So Kenya becomes your origin, where you're commencing your journey from. So that is the COC, the country of commencement of your travel. So that is the origin. It is the very first ticketed point. We have intermediate points next. This is the ticketed via points. V intermediate points, these are ticketed via points in between consecutive fair construction points. And when you talk about the consecutive fair construction points, it means bet it is between the fair construction origin, it is in between the fair construction point origin and the fair construction point 
destination, then it is at the middle, that is the intermediate via point. So if you understand point A, point B, then at the, in the middle we have the intermediate points. Now it comes in between, and that's why they're called via points. So ticketed via points in between consecutive fire, uh, fire constructions points, that is origin, destination, and this is also referred to as transfer points, where, uh, which are further classified as number one, intermediate stopover. When you talk about the intermediate stopover, remember I'm still in the intermediate points. We have the very first category of it, intermediate stopover. And in the in intermediate stopover, this implies that point where the passenger breaks his journey and is not scheduled, is not scheduled to depart within is not it's scheduled to depart within the 24 hours of arrival. So that's a stopover. It's not scheduled. So you arrive at that uh, point, that is an intermediate, you start your journey from origin A, you've arrived at your inter intermediate point. You are not scheduled to depart. You stay there maybe and you continue your journey later on. So that's a stopover. It's a stopover. You are not allowed to move any further, the next day maybe you can continue your journey. That's a stopover. Then we go to intermediate no stopover. When you talk about an intermediate stopover, this is normally a point where the passenger arrives and departs within the 24 hours. It is also known as a transfer connection or a connection point. So when you talk about the intermediate no stopover, this is whereby it, there is no stopover. It means that you have arrived at that point that point, which is an intermediate point, you've, you are from a point A, origin. You're moving on to, through to the point B, which is your final destination, but there's a point where you've arrived into, which is an intermediate point. Then when you say no stopover, it means that you have still to depart within the 24 hours, either to transfer to another flight or connected, get connected to another flight. That's what we call a stopover, an, an intermediate no stopover. Then there's something here I want you learner to understand or to note. Transfer points are not the same as transit points. Unlike transfer points, tra transit points do not always involve a change of plane. So get that very clear. There is fair component. There is also another thing under the anatomy of a journey which you need to understand. There is the issue of the fair component. And fair component normally it's a portion of the itinerary between two consecutive fair construction points. And remember what I've said about a fair construction point. It is whereby there is the point A and point B, and each and every point, there is a fair construction point. So that's a portion, and normally we say that's a fair component. You are coming from point A, that's, there's a fair construction point A, that is origin, and they say there's a fair construction point B, which is your final destination. So in all those then, we say you're moving from point A, you're going to point B, origin, destination, then there has to be what you call a fair component, where there are fair construction. Destination, destination, this is the ultimate stopping place of the journey, and as a terminal point in the routine, it is also considered as the fair construction point or a fair break point, where the fair is actually coming to an end, fair break point, destination. So, Lana, get that very clear. Then I'll take you through the types of journey so that you know if you're moving from Kenya, for example, you want to go to London. Are you going to London coming back or are you going to London and it's a final stop? Maybe you don't involve in so much travel. Maybe it's a one way or a round trip or a, I'll take you now though, through those types of journey, which maybe you find yourself involved with in some times in life. So one way trip. One-way trip is normally a very simple one-way journey using one-way affairs, whereby you just move from point A, you're going to point B. So you just use one fair component because there will be no moving back to point A. So there's one fair component. And remember what I've just said about the fair component. So that is a simple one-way journey using one-way fares and possessing the following features. This is the features one-way trip has. One. The origin and the final destinations are normally in different countries because remember I've said you're moving from Kenya going to London. It can never be the same. Kenya can never be London, London, you know. It has to be different countries. So 
This journey consists also of one fair component. Remember, I've said moving from one point to another point, there's one fair component involved. And remember, if it's an open uh, round trip or a return trip, it will involve two fair components because there will be also another fair construction starting from the destination back to the back to the origin. So one fair component is in this one-way trip. We go to round trip or a return trip is a travel entirely by air from a point to another point and return to the original point. So I said on this round it's where you're moving from point a you're moving you're coming from kenya going to london and still as you arrive to london you will be coming back to kenya so that's a round trip or a return trip is entirely a travel from a point to another point and return still to the origin po original point it has two fair components and equal normal fares it is a round trip or a, uh, in a round trip or a return trip the origin and the destinations are in the same country remember i said it's a return so you come back to the origin where you had come from so the return and the, the 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 origin and the destination now tend to be in the same country because it's a round or a return trip circle trip circle trip it involves travel from a point and return there to by a continuous acutious motion or a, or, a, or, a, or a continuous acutious route the journey comprises two fair components so it's like you're moving your let me give an example of here in kenya you're coming from jkia you're going to uh kisumu and then still you go to another airport maybe in eldoret and then that's a more of a continuous acutious air uh, and it has very it has maybe two fair components so that's a circle trip it involves different airports whereby you move like it's like a circuitous uh, motion or air route an open jaw flight an open jaw flight as another type of a journey is one that in the simplest term implies or implies flying from a point or point a to point b and then from point c back to point b remember here now lana you are moving from point a you're going to point b but you want to go back to point a using another different airport you will not use the necessary one the b you will use another one which is maybe point c a different airport but maybe was a neighboring airport to the final destination you had arrived to so use another different airport to reach in to the point a so you're moving from point a you're going to point B, but you will not use the point B coming back to point B, uh, A, sorry. You will use another different one, which is a point C somewhere, and then go back to your point A. So in, is that simplest? Um, in its simplest form, then it's flying from point A to point B, then from point C back to point B. Points B and C are often neighboring airports, or at least in the same generate, uh, general area. So you don't have necessarily to use the same airport you had used to reach to your final destination. Use a different one and so that you go back to your origin point. Now, Lana, since you've learned so much on the issues of how air affairs is, then it is good that you also understand. We have to know so that when you'll be traveling, you know how many stopovers was I involved with or how many transfers was I. And as a passenger, you should be able to do those simple counting for yourselves so that you know how many stopovers have been involved with and they like you just don't have to see them on your receipt so that you, you get uh, maybe the knowledge or maybe to, to knowing how many transfers and stopovers you are uh, involved with it's good that also as a passenger you know how to count it for yourself because of the different routines that you'll be involved with uh, so guidelines on how to count stopovers and transfers guidelines on how to count stopovers and transfers for a fair component count all intermediate points 
for a fair component. You see, what I said about the fair component is whereby we have the, uh, two consecutive fair construction points. And these two consecutive fair construction points are fair construction point A, the origin, and the fair construction point B, the destination. So if you understand that, you're knowing where you're coming from and where you're going to, then you'll be able to know which are the intermediate points you are involved with. And you, from there, you'll be able to now start knowing how to count, whether it's a stopover or a transfer. So for a fair component, count all intermediate points with a stop of more than 24 hours as a stopover. Then with that, you will know that was the first stopover I've, be, I've encountered or I've, uh, my journey has encountered. Then with that, you will now start knowing how these issues of air transportation is normally uh, done. So learner, just know a fair component. Just understand where you're coming from, the origin and the destination. Then as you're moving on, count all the intermediate points with a stop, with a stop of course, of more than 24 hours as a stopover. Then with that, you will now be starting to count and to knowing how to count whether it was a stopover or a transfer. So with this, you've now started knowing how to count a stopover. Of course, there you will know that's the first stopover I've encountered in my journey. Uh, then there is to count the number of transfers in a fair component, to count the number of transfers in a fair component, Include, include all intermediate points, all intermediate points as transfer points. So when you'll be counting transfers in your journey, and if you want to know how to do it and to be accurate, then you must do this. Count the number of transfers in a fair component. I've said if it's a fair component or maybe one fair component, it's a return to, uh, a, a, a one way. Origin A, uh, point A point B, or the uh, origin and the destination. Of course, with that, you'll be now be able to count all intermediate points as, inter as transfer points because every fair comp component in a journey, it has to have a, an intermediate via point. So with that, it will be very helpful for you and you'll be able to count very easily a transfer because you now know in this, we had a, tra a, a stopover or maybe a transfer point at maybe Cairo. We were going to Egypt. Uh, you were going to Namibia. You maybe stopped at that and you knew that was either where you connected or you were transferred. Then with that, it becomes very easy for you to know I encountered a transfer in my journey. And you'll be able to count. Then you went further and you were able to identify a stopover because you went at a place and you were able to, to spot a place where you stopped for more than 24 hours. Then with that, you'll be able to know we had a stopover, maybe one or two stopover. Then with that, it becomes very easy for you to know how to, sto to count stopovers and transfers. And remember, a stopover cannot be a transfer point. So this includes all stopovers and connections points. So as you're doing this, you'll also be knowing how to do it because and counting because you know I was involved with a transfer point where I was connected, you know, I was connected to another flight or plane, then you know that's one of the, 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 the transfers you are involved with in your journey. A stopover, I've said if it goes, uh, if you, you go to a place and you stop for more than 24 hours, then you know a stopover was there. Uh, so, Lana, it's good that you understand how to do this simple counting of the stopovers, stopovers and transfers, so that you know how your journey is really going on. And with that, you will have a full knowledge of the anatomy of a journey and how a journey should be. So to go on uh, with the issue of the guidelines on how to count the stopovers and the transfers, still you have to, to know, do not include the fair construction points. This is very important, Lana, please note this. As you're doing this counting of transfers and stopovers, be very careful that you do not count fair construction points. And fair construction points, remember, I've said it is fair construction origin, fair construction destination, where you're going to. So don't count them. Don't count them and all, uh, because they are not part and parcel on how to do a, a, a transfer count or a, a stopover count. Uh, the other thing is that where there's a surface break, 
where there's a surface break. The last point of arrival by air and the po first point of departure count together as one transfer. I hope there's something you've noted there. Where there's a surface break, the last point of arrival, hmm, you've arrived, the last point of arrival, so that's the destination. And the first point of departure, first point of departure, of course, that is the origin. Count together as one transfer. So we find that we have three issues to notice there. We have a surface break, and we have the uh, air, uh, we have the point of departure, and also we have the arrival point. Uh, we are being told you take them together and count them as one transfer. What I meant by surface break, a surface break is whereby you maybe land in a certain airport and maybe it was maybe for refueling issues, you know, uh, all those kinds of a thing. Uh, there were some services that were to, to be done maybe on an aircraft and the like. So there was what we call a surface break. There was that kind of whereby there was like not a connection really, not a transfer, but more so there were some services that were to be done and it encountered or, or you, in your entire journey you encountered what you call a surface break. So there was like a break somehow. So you are told with all that together with the points of construction of fares, which is the point of arrival and the point of departure, count them together as transfer. With that then, you'll now be able to know how all these issues of stopovers, transfers are normally done to come up with a precise number of those specific transfers and stopovers you've got or you've encountered in your entire journey or routine. So Lana, with all those then, you, those information, you will be best placed to knowing what is to be done or what you should do whenever you are in an airport or whenever you are traveling by air. You will know, I'm, in, I'm traveling to Namibia, I'm going to Botswana, I'm going to London. Then what kind of a journey am I involving myself into? Then you know, should I go for the one way or is, is mine a round trip or a circle trip, you know? It will really depend. But if you have this basic knowledge, then you'll be well placed to knowing where or how air fares are normally calculated. But that one will be done in our next lesson. So for today's lesson, uh, I really think uh, with those issue, uh, few issues I've brought forth in this lesson will help you to understand a bit on how air fares and ticketing are done during air transportation. So Lana, I come to the end of that session and that lecture. I now tend to end there, but in case you have questions, que uh, problems or maybe challenges to understand in air fares and ticketing, I'll be there to answer your queries and to help you understand more. So let's continue interacting more on the e-learning and we learn together. Thank you so much, Lana. Thank you for your time of listening. See you. Bye-bye and take care. These televised lectures supplement our robust online learning going on on our MKU online platform. You can view more on our televised lectures via our online platform. We are in a digital era and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke. Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.